Hello, welcome to the Daily News Ukraine channel. Today is December 19 and our daily review of news about Ukraine. Germany will follow the results of Vladimir Putin's visit to Minsk for a meeting with Alexander Lukashenko and how this may affect Belarus' role in the war. German government spokesperson Stefan Hebestreit said this at a briefing on Monday, December 19, according to an Ukrainform correspondent. According to him, the federal chancellor is fully aware that Russian President Putin is visiting Belarus for the first time in three years. Of course, there are concerns about what this visit might entail, whether the role of Belarus in Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine will once again change or be modified, he said. At the moment, everyone sees that Belarus is at least providing assistance to the Russian military, in particular by providing its airspace and ground bases, Hebestreit said. Of course, Belarusian aid to the Russian army may increase, he said, but urged to wait for the results and not draw any conclusions in advance. He also recalled that Chancellor Olaf Scholz in his recent interview spoke not only about differences of opinion with Russia over the past 10 months, but also about global differences on fundamental issues. Germany now strongly supports Ukraine and demands that Russia withdraw its troops and return to a just peace. Putin is visiting Belarus on December 19 for talks with Lukashenko. Since the beginning of the Russian war, the two dictators have met several times, but their meetings took place either on Russian territory or during regional forums. Putin postponed the beginning of an all-out invasion of Ukraine three times, with the attack last postponed in mid-February. That's according to Vadim Skibitsky, a representative of the main intelligence directorate of the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, reads a statement posted on the agency's website, Ukraineform reports. Russian President Vladimir Putin consulted for a long time with the chief of the general staff of the Russian Federation, Valery Gerasimov, and the Minister of Defense of the aggressor country, Sergei Shoigu, before the invasion and postponed the offensive three times. According to our information, the offensive was last postponed in mid-February. The FSB pushed Gerasimov to invade. The Russians were sure that they had conducted sufficient preparation, because they had invested huge resources in it, Skibitsky said. At the same time, the general staff of the Russian Federation seriously miscalculated the assessment of the situation, since the Russian military units were provided with food, ammunition and fuel for only three days. In addition, Ukrainian intelligence received a lot of information from local residents who reported on how many occupiers stay in each settlement and in which building they are. Ukraine has received received 105 pieces of energy equipment worth more than $100,000 free of charge from the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. According to Ukraineform, Ukraine's national energy company Ukrainergo said this in a post on Facebook. New equipment worth a total of over $100,000 from our American partners from USAID is already being prepared for installation at a substation damaged by Russian shelling. These are devices that help manage technological processes and monitor the key technological parameters of the substation, detect problems in the equipment in time and prevent accidents. Some 105 pieces of such equipment were provided free of charge to Ukrainergo by our partners from the USAID Energy Security Project, the Post said. According to the report, the equipment was manufactured specifically for the needs of Ukrainergo by the leading U.S. firm SEL, Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories, in the shortest possible time. This and other key replaced equipment will make it possible to restore the operation of the substation and the stability of the energy supply in the region, which is currently suffering from a shortage of power, the transmission of which is complicated due to damage to key generation and transmission facilities, Ukrainergo added. Two aviation squadrons of the Ukrainian State Border Guard Service have received Rosenbar Panther Airport fire trucks from the federal agency for technical relief of the German Interior Ministry. That's according to the State Border Guard Service, Ukraineform reports. Humanitarian aid to aviators was provided to strengthen departmental fire protection as part of the agency's cooperation with the State Border Guard Service. According to the report, the transfer of two pieces of modern special equipment took place at a Ukrainian-Polish border checkpoint. 
A representative of the agency who carried out the transfer of humanitarian aid said that today the Rosenbauer Panther is one of the most efficient fire engines in the world, and the specifications of these vehicles make them the most modern example of firefighting equipment. On the night of December 18-19, Russia attacked Ukraine with 34 Shahid Kamikaze drones from a new Iran batch of 250 UAVs. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said this in an online address to the participants in a meeting of the leaders of the UK Joint Expeditionary Force, JEF, Ukraineform reports. Ukraine was again attacked by Iranian drones last night. 34 Shahids I say both the number and the name and quite specifically. These are Shahids from a new batch that Russia received from Iran. 250 pieces, that's how many Shahids have now been received by the terrorist state, he said. Zelensky said Russian missiles and Iranian drones were being constantly used for strikes, primarily against Ukrainian energy infrastructure. According to him, only one recent massive attack on Ukraine affected more than 20 million Ukrainians, leaving cities with a population of more than a million and most of the Ukrainian regions without electricity. A total of 22.408 million Ukrainians were disconnected from the energy supply on the evening of December 16. The supply of water and heating to more than 10 million people was halted, he added. On the night of December 19, Russia carried out another massive attack using kamikaze drones. The Ukrainian Air Force shot down 30 out of 35 drones. On the night of December 19, a Shahid Kamikaze drone was spotted flying over the South Ukraine nuclear power plant. December 19, at 046, a Shahid Kamikaze drone was spotted flying over the territory of the South Ukraine NPP in the vicinity of the nuclear facility, Ukraine's National Nuclear Energy Generating Company Energodom posted on Telegram. Energotum emphasized that this is an absolutely unacceptable violation of nuclear and radiation safety. We address the IAEA and the entire global nuclear community, informing about the flight of a combat drone over the nuclear plant site. We ask you once again to prevent nuclear facilities from being exposed to the risk of Russian army attacks posing a threat to the nuclear and radiation safety of Ukraine and the world, the company said. As reported, on the night of December 19, Russia launched another massive attack with the use of kamikaze drones. The Air Force of the Armed Forces of Ukraine shot down 30 Shahid UAVs out of 35 launched. OL. Over the past two days, seven ships loaded with 182,000 tons of Ukrainian agricultural products left the seaports of Odessa region. Grain Initiative, over the past two days, seven ships loaded with 182,000 tons of agricultural products bound for Africa, Asia, and Europe left the ports of Odessa region, the press service of the Ministry of Infrastructure of Ukraine posted on Facebook. In particular, tankers Bosphorus Asia and Princess Manissa bulk carriers will deliver 51,000 tons of corn to Tunisia and Libya. As of December 19, 24 ships are being processed in the ports of Odessa region. A total of 973,000 tons of Ukrainian agricultural products are loaded onto them. Five ships are moving along the Grain Corridor to be loaded with 104,400 tons of agricultural products. Since August 1, 565 ships have left the ports of Odessa region carrying 14.2 million tons of Ukrainian foodstuffs to the countries of Asia, Europe, and Africa. As reported, in Istanbul on November 17, Ukraine, the UN, and Turkey agreed to extend the initiative for the safe transportation of agricultural products across the Black Sea for another 120 days. The initiative began working on July 22 and the first ship with Ukrainian foodstuffs within its framework left the port of Odessa on August 1. OL. The invaders forced the owners of resorts in the temporarily occupied Crimea to accommodate soldiers arriving from Russia. In the village of Yerogak slash Mishvan in Agmasitsk slash Kornomorsk district, the Russian occupiers demand that the owners of resorts accommodate Russian servicemen redeployed to the occupied Crimea from the territory of Russia. Rifat Chiborov, chairman of the Mejlis of the Crimean Tatar people, posted on Facebook. As reported, in the temporarily occupied Crimea, T-34 
teachers are forced to write statements about refusing part of their salary in favor of the Russian army. OL. At least nine buildings were damaged and three people were injured in a Russian drone attack on Kyiv region. We already have three casualties and at least nine damaged houses in Kyiv region as a result of today's massive attack launched by invaders, Kyiv region police chief Andrei Nebitov posted on Telegram. Script async src equals https forward slash forward slash telegram dot org slash js slash telegram widget dot js 21 data telegram post equals Andrei underscore Nebitov slash 905 data width equals 100% slash script the police discovered and examined the wreckage of three drones shot down by the air defense forces in two districts of the region. Law enforcement officers continue to record the consequences of the attack. I call on citizens to immediately take shelter when an air raid siren sounds. Your health and life depend on it, Nebitov emphasized. Read also, air defense forces down 18 out of 23 enemy drones in Kiev as reported, kamikaze drones launched by the Russians on the night of December 19 damaged infrastructure facilities and private houses in Kiev region. OL. In Kherson, a man was killed during a Russian attack this morning, December 19. Yesterday, December 18, a local resident was killed in the shelling of a settlement in Berislav district. A pretrial investigation was launched within criminal proceedings over the violation of the laws and customs of war. On December 18, a local resident was killed in the shelling of a settlement in Berislav district. On the morning of December 19, a man was killed in the center of Kherson City, the Kherson Regional Prosecutor's Office posted on Telegram. Script async src equals https forward slash forward slash telegram dot org slash js slash telegram widget dot js 21 data telegram post equals fogovua slash 1284 data width equals 100 percent slash script according to the investigation data, Kherson City and its suburbs as well as Berislav district, remain under massive Russian fire. It is noted that five civilians were hospitalized in less than two days. The enemy damaged residential buildings, administrative buildings, vehicles, and critical infrastructure facilities. According to preliminary data, the enemy attacked the territories with MLRS and S-300 missiles. As reported, the Russian military shelled the territory of Kherson region 69 times over the past day. OL. Today we were talking about those news. Berlin, closely following Putin's visit to Minsk. Putin postponed date for full-scale invasion of Ukraine three times intelligence. Ukraine gets over $100,000 worth of energy equipment from USAID. Ukrainian border guards get two airport fire trucks from German Interior Ministry. Russia last night attacked Ukraine with Shahid drones from new Iran batch, Zelensky. Kamikaze drone spotted flying over South Ukraine NPP, Energodom. Seven ships with agricultural products have left ports of Odessa region in two days. Owners of Crimean resorts forced to accommodate Russian soldiers. Three people injured in Russian drone attack on Kyiv region. Man killed in morning attack on Kherson.